All right, it's that time to make a video about batteries. A little update on some batteries that I've shown you before. So remember these batteries, these are great. A nine baud, 36 volts, 15 amp power. These are huge, half a kilowatt right here, right? Over half a kilowatt. They come in 60 cells. They have two types of cells, these purple ones, the M26s, also the uh, gray ones, which are also M26s, right? Great cells. We've been using these forever because they came in uh, 9 baht, uh scooter packs forever now for the past five years or so, right? And so there's been like billions of those. We've sold quite a bit of them. So these packs are uh, pretty amazing. These are from like the second generation or third generation scooters. Uh, they're pretty good, they're pretty compact, they're well packaged, except for one problem. They don't work. <laughs> Remember I made the video where I was trying to test them and they don't work, they have a BMS right here. This is the original BMS. It's a great BMS. It's got double temperature sensors, it's got good MOSFETs, it's got a little LED here to let you know the, you know, the capacity, the, 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 the status of the thing. It's all great, except for the fact that they're software locked. And because these, I don't think, are as abundant as the first generation, I haven't found someone to that has unlocked them, right? It requires someone with intimate knowledge of coding and stuff. And I, you know, that to me, that's like Chinese. So I don't know how to code. I don't know. So I would have to hire someone. And I just thought, let's wait around and see if someone in the forums uh, takes enough interest in these, right? Well, it, it turns out the first generation they did, but this, the second generation, no one's done it. And so either I have to kind of pay out of my pocket to hire someone to do it, or I find a brute force or a simpler way to doing this. Uh, and uh, that's the option that I've gone for. Of course, we could always figure out how to do this and I'm not giving up on these. There are a lot of these. I have, you know, close to a thousand of these packs in my warehouse, but, um, and then I'm supposed to get like another 3,000 pounds of this stuff, right? So another two, three pallets, maybe another 300 of these or something like that. Um, so these are around. They're, you know, they're, they're, so maybe, yeah, someone will still find that or I'll figure out how to do it. But for now, just because they're sitting in my warehouse and they've been selling, people, you guys are buying them. I don't know what you guys are doing with them as of right now. Maybe you guys are just taking the BMS and changing it because that's simple to do. And that is the what I've decided to do. That is the simplest thing for me, right? You take the BMS, it's two screws. You take all these connectors off. They have connectors and a few, you have to snip a few wires. And then what I did is I designed a board. And this board right here just uses an off the shelf 30 amp, uh, 36 volt BMS, right? And so this is the first iteration that I did. And then I kept messing with it. And I thought, no, we got to be able to make this easier to install. To, well, easier to make, to, to populate and those other stuff. And then easier to install. And then here is kind of the final one. I'm still, I, there's one more version after this. I've been messing around. Um, it's a, lot, a, lot, a little bit uh, smaller. And so it, it, in order to put it in there, it's a lot quicker. This one, you kind of fight with it a little bit. Uh, also, there's several things that I've done, like uh, we're, get, we're changing, we're trying to make these so that it doesn't take 10 minutes to build one, but it takes one minute instead, right? And so we're changing these cables uh, to one that it's already has the, the things so that you don't have to like cut them and terminate them and or put these little connectors in here. You know, everything starts adding up in time and money. And so, but also what I want to do is actually make it so that I one day I can sell this with the connectors already soldered, everything that you need. And anyone with a single screwdriver can take one of these packs apart and then with a single screwdriver, install it, connect the cables. And, and so the, re the way I'm doing that is by installing these little um, terminals, screw terminals, right? So that you don't have to solder. There's a lot of people, a lot of good people out there that just want to use a battery, but they just do not want to learn to solder or get a soldering iron and do it, right? And so, yeah, you could just, uh, you know, peel this back out and then put it in there uh, and just with a little screwdriver, tighten that screw and you're ready to go. And now you install everything back in there and then you're in business, right? Here is one that I have already fixed or, you know, changed the BMS. And of course, 
again, this is not the most, uh, the best way to fix these, right? They already have a BMS that's likely better than this, you know, off the shelf third party BMS that we can buy here. Uh, but it is locked right now and we don't know, we haven't been able to unlock it. So until that happens, this is, I think, the only way right now that I can come up so I can fix them. So we've ordered a bunch of BMSs, we've ordered a bunch of boards. Right now, some of my guys are taking some of these apart and we will make some of these in-house, but I'm also, you know, with like all my projects, these are all gonna be open source. So you'll be able to buy the board already so that you can take it apart and do the thing. Or and also just buy the bare board so that you can buy all the components yourself and then do, uh, you know, uh, populate it. And why would anybody want to do that? Because then that's the cheapest way, right? If every time I touch one of these things, then I'd have to add a bunch of money and a bunch of cost to it because I have to pay guys, right? Here in California, which is really expensive, labor is expensive, and I want to pay my guys, you know, decent wages. I don't want to be running a, you know, a sweatshop here. And so that's why I offered the whole range, you know, done, ready to go, right? Which is going to add, you know, considerable more cost to this battery or but all the way from that to the, you get all the parts exactly from where i get them and so i'm completely out of the loop there and so you don't have to pay me anything right you just order all the parts yourself and then you you do a little bit of work and then you save some money you get these batteries at the cheapest possible way and so that's that's what we're doing here so today what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna test a couple of these with an inverter so you can see how they uh, perform with the new, uh, you know, installed BMS that we have in here. All right, so here's our setup. It's just a grid tie inverter. It's gonna load it up with about 30 amps, I think. So it's gonna max out that little BMS there. Uh, we'll see how it handles. Maybe it'll just blow up. Ooh, okay, 26. 0.8 800 watts we started with uh, 20 amp hours so that's a 15 amp hour battery we'll see where we end right we'll check capacity and then uh, we'll put the thermal camera to see how that little BMS is uh, handling the load here 26 almost 27 amps out of 30 yeah we're, we're right there like you know almost 90% of its capacity all right, so we can see how the temperature climbs in there. Let's see, 39. Ooh, uh, those two hot points right on the uh, on the battery there, those are where those cables are at. So that's the exit points. Ooh, 40C. Yeah, 26.7 amps. <laughs> Okay, so here's what we got. Uh, we were like within three amp hours to go. I think it was eight. Yeah, so within three amp hours. So what was that, 12? Yeah, somewhere around 12 amp hours, the BMS cut off. And now there's zero voltage in here. And so this kind of cut off. Um, so we don't know if it's because one of the cell groups maybe got too low. We could check that right now but the BMS stepped in. So that's a good thing um, before it got too low. There was still like around 32 volts. 
which is uh, the cells should be all be above three volts at that point, right? But we can check right now and see if that is the case. How hot is that battery? Battery itself. Ooh, 60C, that, those are hot cells. So 3.4 on the first group, 3.4 on the second group, 3.4 on the third group, 3.4 on the fourth, 0.46 on the fifth, 3.46, 3.45 on the seventh, 3.45 on the eighth, 3.45 on the ninth, and 3.45 on the tenth. No, so all the cells are within spec. I think either the BMS got too hot or the cells got too hot and the BMS decided to shut it down, but it decided to shut down. Okay, so the way this BMS is work to wake them up, now you just put power back into the charging port and then charge it up a little bit and then the uh, BMS will function again. So I think this BMS is a good choice here. It worked okay. Should be able to put full power. Should be able to get about 27 amps continuous off of this battery uh and the uh, mosfets will stay within uh spec because uh i looked them up and they they could go up to 150 uh degrees celsius and they only got to about 107 or something like that so yeah i think maybe you have a little bit more room but then you're asking for trouble if you're trying to run this continuous at peak right these are cheap chinese electronics right so if you run them at peak you know they will fail so yeah i would recommend you know running these at 20 amps all day i think they'll be fine the cells will stay cool the bms will stay cool enough for you to run uh, last forever now next video i'll show you how to use these uh for some stuff maybe like uh maybe a really cheap e-bike will extend it and i think you can get something like 40 miles <laughs> with this battery on, on a like little cheap e-bike um, and also the regular stuff like adding uh, more capacity to like popular uh, devices you know like home storage devices power packs and stuff so stay tuned for that video but for now it looks like we found one way to fix these and it's not going to be too painful we'll be make all these available fixed already and then the parts so that you can do it yourself okay we'll see you guys on the next video Bye. All right, so here is the final uh, upgraded BMS. This one is a third party, 30 amps, uh, and it's got a charge and discharge port, just like the original one. And all you have to do is just connect, solder two cables in here the main positive and then the main negative right here and then connect this pin. Uh, there's two versions of these batteries. One has two of these pins and then this one has just the one. But after that, this battery is ready to go. If you check power in here, voltage in here, there's voltage and then you can charge through the regular, um, through the regular connector here also.